I see that we're going to grow. I'm not just talking about the numbers of people, but inside of us will grow. And we'll see the power of God, not just a little bit, but great things that will blow your mind. Thank you, sir. Preacher Belinda. What do you want? Future. I see us growing. She's not a prophet. I understand now. But but I also see us working hard together. I see us I see us joining as a family, not not just on Sundays, but I see us doing things together outside of church so that people can see that we're not just people that get together on Sundays. I want us to, to grow and, and become closer. Where, where Pastor Fred says call and touch each person once a week, I think that's going to happen. And then, we'll, then the, the, once we get like that, then the church, the people will come in. Thank you. Mark chapter 14, verse 22. Uh, I, I, I think we cannot continue as an isolated individual. We have to become an integrated group. You cannot do things on your own individuals. But I have to do things together. You understand that? Simon, come up here. <clears throat> See, he knows exactly what to do. You have something you wanted to say. Because earlier we were talking about the church camp, and I was just going to say when I fell and <laughs> almost broke my elbow. <laughs> Repeat that. I just wanted to say when I fell and almost broke my elbow. Okay. But the Lord protected you, right? Yeah. So that's good. Yep. And I didn't break my elbow. <laughs> what about this? No, this, this is okay. This it's is okay. right. Okay. It's all right. Okay. Thank you, son. That's not why I called him up here. I said, we cannot remain isolated. We have to become an integrated church. And I don't mean by ethnic. You look around, we have enough. We really don't have enough, but we have many different uh, ethnicities here um, in this church. But we have to learn to support each other. Uh, I saw it, the beginning of it happened last week at Norwalk uh, Square at the lawn. Not, not Norwalk Square, but at Norwalk City Hall, uh, the lawn there. We had workers. We cooked over 4,000 hot dogs. We put more than 4,000 hot dogs in buns and wrapped them up, plus a multitude of other things. We cannot do that as individuals. I, I tried to cook all 4,000 by myself. Well, maybe I'll not. <laughs> but I, I gave up at about 3,000. I was wore out. 
Mabel, she's young. She just kept on going. Uh, and uh, Joey, he came and took my place. Thankful for that. We have to begin to do things together. And uh, that's not my scripture. Let's, let's read the verse. Maybe that will help. Um, Mark 14.22 says, And as they did eat, Jesus took the bread, he blessed it, he broke it, and he gave to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body. As you look at that scripture, what, what's the first thing Jesus did? He went over to the table. He didn't bless the food first. He took the bread. Jesus took the bread. That's the first thing he did. Now, most of us know about the communion service and the meaning and all of that. Um... Today, I'm, I'm looking at this a little bit different uh, perspective. I'm looking at the bread. Now, I know the Scripture says that Jesus is the bread of life. I'm not trying to say that's not true, no. But in this story, I want us to picture yourselves as the bread. Jesus is here, and Jesus takes the bread. You're the bread. Jesus accepts you. Jesus will take you. Now, I've, I, I, I've, I've cooked or tried to cook some bread, and uh, I had to throw it away. Uh, it was hard as a rock. Kind of like this one. About like that. So I just threw it away. But let me tell you something. No matter what your situation is, Jesus will not throw you away. He will accept you when you surrender yourselves to Him. You surrender yourselves to Him... He is in control of you. Jesus is in control of you when you surrender yourselves to Him. He takes us. He will not reject you. Doesn't matter how bad you are. He accepts you. Now understand, when you surrender to Jesus, He's in control of you. That's where people have a problem. We don't want Him to control us. We don't want him to be in charge of my car. We don't want him to be in charge of my money. We don't want him to be in charge of my girlfriend or boyfriend. We don't want him to be in charge of my children. Yeah. But he wants to be in control of everything in your life. That's why we're here on this earth. To allow him to be in control of us. If you, you surrender to him, he'll take you. Now, there are some people Jesus will reject. The only people Jesus rejects are those who reject him. And those who reject him controlling me. Yeah? Then Jesus will reject you. Matthew 7.23 says, I will tell them clearly, I never knew you. Away, you evildoers. 
those are the ones he will not accept. Jesus said, blessed are those whose robes are, are pure and have, have life. Then they'll go through the gates of the city. Jesus said, all that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will not cast out. No matter what you've done, if you surrender to him, he will not reject you. He will accept you. But understand, when you surrender to him, he takes control. I ask about negative things about the church here. No one wanted to say it. Well, I see many negative things about this church. Now, I see many beautiful, positive things, too. All of you smile. There. Even the fake smiles. <laughs> but we don't have a children's ministry. We need someone to take charge of that. That's the only reason why. And it has to be someone God has called you can't just do it. Reading that scripture, what does Jesus do next? Second thing. Then Jesus blessed the bread. Understand, you accept Jesus Christ in your heart. You allow him to take control. <laughs> he blesses you. My life has been blessed. I, as a kid, uh, Mariah, uh, do you dream about what you're going to become when you become an adult? No? Okay. Uh, what about you, Simon? You thought about what you're going to become when you become an adult? What, what you going to do? He's going to become an architect. Good job. Yes, Mariah. She wants to become a doctor. Great profession. I can see you as a doctor. Loving people. Caring for people. That's your character. Jesus blesses the bread. That's you and I. When I was their age, I dreamed about my future. H have you dreamed about your car, Simon? What kind of car do you plan to have? He's going to have, he, are, he knows just like that. Camaro. I agree. Awesome car. A new or a used one? New. When I was his age, I never dreamed about owning a new car. That was just over the top. Impossible. It was impossible in my life as a kid. I dreamed about owning a car. And I owned one when I was uh, 14 or 15 years old. I bought it. I drove it. But it was second hand. It was the year I was born and I was 15 years old. So it was 15 or 17 years old. The car. And, uh, but I was poor, okay? Poor. I never dreamed about the possibility of owning a new car. But when I surrender my life to God, He gives me blessings. I'd ask my wife how many new cars we have owned, but she probably couldn't count them. She's over here. Brand new cars. 
I, I, I guess the first brand new car. Four. Come. Brand new. We had that. Oh, oh, before that AMC, I'd forgotten about that one. Before the AMC, we had a Toyota Supra. Yeah. Well, the first year they came out, brand new. We had a brand new Chevy station wagon that year also. We've had a Lincoln. It, it was okay. It had... 20,000 miles. Okay, I call that new. I had a new uh, Honda Ridgeline. We had a new AMC. And the list just goes on and on and on. God has blessed us. God's blessed me with refrigerators. Yeah? Oh, the brown van, the green van. Ah, a whole bunch of cars, and, and I think about it, we could add a few more, I'm sure, that were brand new. Now, that's over a period of 45 years, understand, since we've been married. And, uh, yeah, it's a while. 45 years. What was I going to say? Oh, blessings, blessings. Oh, and God blesses me with refrigerators. We moved to Baton Rouge, Louisiana. We had a refrigerator. It's one of those about yay high and a round top and with the pull-down handle. And the top opened up and you had to take an ice pick and chop that white frost off to get the ice. But... Uh, that belonged to my mother who bought it second hand. She gave it to one of my sisters who got married. That sister gave it to another sister who got married. That sister gave it to another sister who got married. That sister gave it to another sister who got married. And that sister gave it to me when I got married. And it was making noise. The phone would ring. Pick it up. You have to unplug it if it ran. You couldn't talk on the telephone. But one day I forgot. I answered the phone and talking to the pastor of the church, and it started. Blah, blah, blah. I said, hold on. Unplug it. He said, what's that noise? I said, it's my refrigerator. What? The next day we went to uh, Sears, chose the most expensive refrigerator, and brought it home. And... The church paid for it. We're blessed with refrigerators. My son recently moved to Missouri. They had a nice refrigerator. Ours was <clears throat> one of those third hand-me-downs again. And, uh, but it was making noise, so they decided not to take it. I got it, brought it to my house. It's not made any noise. I'm blessed. Because I surrender to him. Everything I have, I surrender to him. Every good and perfect gift comes from above. From our Heavenly Father. Mm. Third thing. Oh, but these blessings only take place when you offer yourself to him. When you offer yourself to him, that's when the good things start to happen. The next thing in this scripture, what do you do? He broke the bread. This is one of those that's uh, hard-hearted. I might could break it. I doubt it. That's a part we don't like. 
And that's when the control, we cut it off. When Jesus wants to change something in my life, and I really prefer to keep it, and he wants to change me, many times, it's like the potter with the clay. He makes it, and he doesn't like it, smashes it, and makes it over again. We have, as Christians, we have to remain wet with Holy Spirit so he can change us. So he can change us. We don't want to become hard so that he cannot change us. Yeah, he breaks us. And then the last one, he gave. He gave it. He gave. You and I have to surrender to him, allow him to take control, and then allow him to change me. Yeah. Change me. Okay. Hum. How do you think God wants to change you? Think about it a moment. Now, for you, I am sure you're perfect and there's nothing God wants to change about you. My wife, there's nothing God wants to change about her. Now me, I want to change. No. What is it that God wants to change about you? You got it up here yet? Don't, don't speak it out. How many of you know what God would like to change about me? There's one hand over here who's honest. Oh, there's a couple more, three, four hands. Okay. Uh, Belinda, you didn't raise your hand. What is it that God wants to change about you? No, no, no. Oh, now y'all are confused. Not about me, Pastor Fred Cruz. No, 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 no. <laughs> it's about me. Come on, point to yourself. Okay. Now we're on the right track. What does God want to change about you? How many know what God wants to change about you? Raise your hand. Okay, some of us don't. All right. Some of us need to surrender to him a little bit more. We need to surrender Him so we can give ourselves to other people. I, I know one of the things God would like to change about me, and that's what I said at first, the isolation. I can live by myself. Growing up in high school, I arrived home from school, I went off over there in the woods. And I stayed there until it was time to eat, and I came home. I got through eating. I went back to the woods, and I stayed there till 9 or 10 o'clock at night, and I came back. I could live isolated in isolation. Before always, when we went to Oklahoma, You'd stay there at our farm in, in the trailer for about one day or two days, and man, I'd be bored to death. I got my wife 
drug me to the city and I got used to it. She almost got the farm boy out of the country. Almost. But when I go there, I get bored after a day or two days at max. I'm ready to come back home to do something. But I know what God wants me, and that's my isolation. I prefer to talk to myself instead of my wife. I'll use her. I prefer to talk to myself instead of talking with uh, Hi, Amelia? No, I, I would just love to talk with you. No. Uh, but that's my personality. Come on. Oh, no, you're just shifting. I thought she was going to come up and say something bad. I mean, good. But I know what God wants me to change. That isolation has to become integrated. And I, I, I amaze, I shock myself. The last few months I've been joining with the pastors in Norwalk, uh, planning our events. And that's just not my character. But God is changing. He'll do it. I believe God is changing this church. God is raising up, just like those new flowers out there that just came up from I don't know where. But I believe that's a sign to us that God's getting ready to do something new. It has to begin with a yielded heart. Surrendering to Him. Allowing Him to take control of me. Of you. Yeah. Would you stand together? Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. Hallelujah.